Grace teachings are so delicious. Right. The 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 truth that the Buddha teaches is so practical. Right. You can you can heal. You can see the psychology change your mind with Dhamma. So kind of best medicine. <laughs> it's medicine. Isn't it's that... truly medicine. Yeah. Hello friends, Namaskar, Tastilek. Today I have very special guest with me. Her name is uh, Tembi and she belongs from South Africa. So I am not going to give her introduction because I want to know from her, from her mouth about her life, about her experience and many many things that I am going to uh, take her interview. It's a not kind of interview as you know. I am not a <laughs> like a media person or something like a TV a producer or whatever. So this is uh, as you know I only share the Dhamma in our in my this how to say channel whenever I get time or some special guest to be, come to visit me and I, I take their interview to let you know what they are doing what kind of experience they have. So that's why today uh, I got opportunity and it's a really privilege to have one special guest from far away from South Africa. So I would like to ask her few questions and you can watch it. So Tembi, you are welcome in my channel oh, and, thank you. and I am ha very happy to have you here. So as I told you in your brief introduction, that from where you are but I want to know about your detail introduction detail yes from where and what did you did in your childhood so such kind of so please give me your introduction <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for having me thank you your welcome so I am Tembi I uh, go by Queen Bring of Good Hope um, I grew up in so Western South Africa during Civil War. Oh, okay. So when I came here, I was reading the book called Desmond Tutu. Okay. The Desmond Tutu was really a huge um, activist yes. for peace yes. in South Africa during a very, very difficult time of Civil War and a lot of unrest and turmoil. So I grew up going to school in the morning, mm. driving on people's heads. Driving on people's head? People's bodies. Oh. Because just... at night, there would be massacre. Oh. People would just be getting killed all night long, all night long, all night long. And in the morning, it's just blood. Oh my God. When it, it, was, when it was? Um, 1990. In 1994, Nelson Mandela was released out of prison. Okay. So, I was born 1981 till 1992. This was going on okay. in South Africa. Okay. I mean, it's still going on, but when I was growing up during that time, it was the focal point of okay. apartheid. Okay. Going on. So then, 1994, Nelson Mandela was released out of prison. So I grew up in a time where. All I remember was war. Okay. Just war. Mm. War taints your mind. It, it messes you up a lot. Mm. It messes you up a lot. So I left home at a very young age, 13, I went to boarding school. And then after boarding school, I left and started traveling the world. What I realized was I had lived through so much trauma. Okay. And I didn't realize how traumatized I was until I got to the US and the first seven years of being in the US I couldn't sleep. Oh my God. Because I was out of South African stress and PTSD, mm -hmm. uh, complex uh, stress and post-traumatic stress disorder. I was out of that environment. When I got to the US and started studying psychology and was in a new environment and didn't have that constant like, who's going to kill me? Who's, who's oh going to kill me? Who? Lot of fear. Lots of fear, lots of anxiety. Okay. That was the first time when I got to the US, I was like, 
I have lived through some hell and I didn't even know. And then when I started going to therapy for myself to help me like process all of the things that I'd seen in South Africa, women just getting shot, men getting their heads chopped off. Oh my God. Every day this is South African life. When I started going to therapy and processing that, and when I was starting to become a therapist, I was like, I lived through some stuff. I lived through some crazy, crazy stuff. But thank goodness I found a partner. Okay. So the second year I was in America, second, it's actually the first, yeah, second year in um, taking psychology classes at university, and second year in America, my, one of my psychology teachers said, oh, you should go and take a class. There's this program that is free. You can take it during the winter break for school closes. Yes, yes, go yes, and take yes. it. I said, what is this program? He said, it's called the Vipassana. It's 10 days of silence. I said, right. oh, really? <laughs> He's like, because he had lived in South Africa right, during right. the apartheid time. He was right. a missionary. Right, right. He lives in South Africa during a party time. He's like, you, it would be really great for you since you're studying psychology. I was like, oh, sounds like an interesting experience. There I go and take the path now. Okay. That changed my life forever. Because I heard Goyinka mm. talk about the five precepts. Right. I heard Goyinka talk about the volcanic eruption mm. that comes from within when you, when you don't purify the mind. And I got to experience what it's like to start to purify the mind. Mm. After that first 10 days of Vipassana meditation, I was able to sleep. Oh, that's great. That was the first. I was 23 years old when mm. I went to that Vipassana meditation. Okay. No, 22. Mm. That was the first time I slept like seven hours in my life. Oh, this makes I, huge change. Huge change. Yes. And then, of course, when I go home, when I went back home, it was like a month of sleeping really good. And then after that, the bad nightmare started mm. coming back again. But then I realized, oh, if I don't continue to practice, the pasta is like taking a pill. You get very good, happy vibes that you can sleep and you can enjoy your life and you can start thinking properly. But if you don't continue, you don't clear out the negativity right. and, the, and the trauma. And then when I finished um, university, I went and worked on the New York Stock Exchange. Okay. So that was, my father was in finance. Mm. My mother's a school teacher in South Africa. So I had to make my parents proud. <laughs> so my father wanted me to be in finance. Okay. I really wanted to be a doctor. Mm. Um, but what I realized is that I could mix finance and healing. Okay. I didn't really want to be a doctor. I mm. wanted to be a healer. I knew that I was going to be a healer, but not so much a doctor, mm. but a healer. So when I got into Wall Street, I started to realize that men would come and talk to me during breaks. <laughs> they lose a lot of money <laughs> right. on the stock market, uh, yeah, yeah. and then I'd be yeah. outside, they would think, <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? Let me tell you my problem. Uh, but haven't you studied psychology? Yeah. I'm like, yes, but do you and I are trading the yeah, stock same market thing. together? Yeah. Yeah. Why are you I, now telling right. me your problems? Uh, so I must work like you, uh, trade the stock market, make money on stocks, and then listen to your problems for free? <laughs> I don't think so. Yes. I don't, I don't like my wife. Uh, and then they tell me, oh, yesterday I did too much cocaine. Uh, I'm drinking a lot. So suicidal. Oh my I God. want to kill myself. I'm like, but you make a million dollars a day. What do you mean you want to kill yourself? Right. I realized that my true purpose is the path of healing. Hmm. But who to work with? I didn't realize this at first. Okay. I thought it was, oh, I'm just going to work with people who have lived through civil war. Hmm. I'm going to work with women who come out of abusive relationships or right. abusive situations because that's what I live through. I'm going to work with women who and children who have seen a lot of atrocities. Mm. War creates a lot of hell in the right. head. This was my thinking. But my higher self had a different idea of how to use finance and psychology to be able to help people who can't afford my services. Mm. 
because as much as I would love to help all of humanity, it takes money. Right. It actually takes money to have an app. Mm. It takes money to create content. We were just talking about it, about editing. Right. And microphones and all. It takes money. Right. <laughs> so Spirit said to me, you need to work with men who can afford to pay you. So that you can take this money and invest in microphones, mm. invest in traveling so that I can meet brothers like you. Mm. Invest in buying cameras, invest in buying all of the stuff so that you can actually create content that is geared towards mental health mm. that can help many, many people because you cannot sit one on one with people. Right, right. There's no way. Right. So I then started working with men who were already suicidal in the US. Mm. You have tea or it done? Uh, no, I've forgotten the book. Yeah. And I learned a lot about the male psyche. And men are suffering. Okay. Like we were speaking about suicide with men. I've had a few patients that have committed suicide. And I had to come to an understanding that there's nothing I could have done to prevent them. I could have, I, I, yes, I helped them. Mm. But when somebody's adamant, even if they have billions of dollars, a multi millionaire, mm. unhappiness and misery cannot be stopped if you do not have Dhamma. Yes. Or if you do not have a spiritual practice. Mm. This is what made me stop working, okay. leave America, mm. and say, now I need to follow this path of being a nun. Because I have been psychologizing people, psychologizing people, psychologizing people, but I feel like a loser. Because I am talking to men, okay, the woman, yes, I, I am psychology and uh, do a lot of coaching and therapy work on and they can heal they can, i find that women are easier to understand with my male patients and clients it doesn't matter how much money they have mm. they still go into depression so i said what is missing is the spiritual component right right for women spirituality is easy we are we so love spirituality as women but with men, it's a lot more difficult for men to go into the belief and the mm. faith of spirit and surrender mm. to this idea of God or this idea of a higher power or a higher self. So I said, okay, in Buddhism, I like one thing, no sex. Mm. <laughs> because I've been to all of these other churches mm. and, and oh my God, there's a lot of problems, a lot of problems. Catholic church, a lot of problems. Christianity, oh my goodness. I said, ah. What is it? One thing. Woman, one side. Men, one side. None, this side, no sex. Monks, one side. I like this. Mm. I appreciate this. Because I find that monks focus in on themselves. Right. And they're not busy with worldly things. Mm. I said, I must understand. Mm. As a nun, I must understand this. This is my path to become a nun. So, so, so these things bring you to become a Buddhist. I oh, became a Buddhist, Buddhist because I could sleep. Okay. First meditation, okay. Vipassana. And I thought, okay. oh, Buddhism makes me sleep. Okay, okay. I continue okay. studying Dhamma okay. mm -hmm. and uh, continue purifying my mind with the Vipassana meditation. Okay. No killing. So you find very easy here, very easy, very peaceful. That's why you become a nun. As, as a, I was speaking to you few, before a few days, mm -hmm. that you want to become a Christian nun. Oh yes, twelve years old. Isn't that mm -hmm. very, so? Very but young. why you decided to become a Buddhist nun? Because I was twelve years old when I told my parents that I was going to become a nun. My mm. dad said, "I'm sorry, but you come from the royal family. Okay. Number one. Number two, we're investing too much money into your education. Okay. There's no way you're going to become a nun. Okay. Number three, I figured out maybe like 18, 19, that there was a lot of rape in the Catholic Church okay, okay. and in the, the Christian Church. Mm. So I was like, yeah, I don't think so. Uh, no, mm. I don't think so. I don't want to go down that path. And when I got to the U.S. and started having a lot of friends from um, a lot of Catholic Church friends, mm. I realized that there was a lot of trauma from the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the U.S. is so open about making documentaries mm -hmm. about what's going on in the Catholic Church. I said, oh, my God, I'm so thankful mm -hmm. that I didn't go down that path. Mm -hmm. This is why I, could talk, I was talking to you about sex. Mm -hmm. In the Buddhist culture, you're a nun, you're a nun. You're a monk, you're a monk. Right, separate Sangha. 
separate sangha they have they are doing practice their own and like a nun sangha yes. and a monk sangha mm -hmm. so they have yeah, exactly you seen in thailand mm -hmm. you have been how for how many years you have been practicing in thailand two years now two, two years, years. Yes, yes yes so you know the differences actually she is a nun and uh, in thai tradition she called machi so machi while you was in thailand and you practice for two years isn't that so what make you a buddhist i didn't first say i was a buddhist okay first i was interested in the buddhist teaching okay and dhamma because of the simplicity okay and the powerful psychology i believe completely wholeheartedly in the Buddhist teachings, mm. in the Buddha's way of, of life. Yes. The Buddhist teachings are so delicious. Right. The 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 truth that the Buddha teaches is so practical. Right. You can you can heal, you can see the psychology change your mind with Dhamma. So kind of best medicine. <laughs> it's medicine. Isn't it's that... truly medicine. Yeah. And so this is what has led me down the path mm. to choosing to becoming a Buddhist nun. Uh, Mechi, when you came to Sankasya, isn't that? So you came India, some kind of purpose. So Sankasya, of course, you know the place of Buddha or where Buddha descended from to Sita heaven to give the Abhidharma teaching there. So Sankasya is called as the land of Abhidharma. So while you went there, you teach, you taught in our school to kids. So how did you feel at that time? <laughs> like, I was watching one of the videos that I did with the children in okay. the class, because I did a video with the children in the class. And I said, because I asked each of the children, what do you want to be when you grow up? What are you here to do? Mm. What is your service to humanity? Mm. This is what I ask everywhere I go, whether it's an adult or a child. What do you want to be? And if it's an adult, what is your service to humanity? To see these young children say, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a teacher. I want to be... I, and it wasn't kind of like I want to be a rock star. Mm. And, okay, one... No, I had two... two people who said, oh, they want to be a Bollywood star. Okay. I was like, good for you, you're an artist. <laughs> yeah. But it was like, I want to be an engineer, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a teacher, I want to be a scientist. I I was like, wow. I don't think at 11 years old, 12 years old, I could articulate okay. that I wanted to be a doctor. The, the, the children are so smart. Like, their brains are tuned in. Mm. You know why? Because there's no cell phones. Oh, yes. Because they're out in nature. Right. Fresh air, the sun. The sunset in Sankisa, oh, I'm like, the heavens are here. Truly, <laughs> the Buddha is here. Because honestly, I would go out in the morning and just look at the sun and just cry. I cry a lot. Oh. Uh, yes. I look at the sun and I'm like, oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. Because I'm an artist too, right? Mm. So I just wanted to paint the sun and cry. In the evening, walking, I would just, I take a walk when the sun sets. The sunset is so beautiful. It, it touches you in the soul. It, how could these children not be tapped in to higher consciousness mm. if they are in such a powerful area? Right, right. There's no interruption. Mm. There's no video games. There's no, they are studying yes. out in nature playing, eating good food, and creating a community and a family together, of course these children are smart. Mm. Of course they are smart. I have I've traveled around the world a lot, but those children, are, they're hella smart. Hella smart. <laughs> Honestly, they're yeah. hella smart, but I could, I could understand why. Mm. Nature. Yeah. They meditate in the morning. Yes, yoga yes. With yes. your brother. Yes, yes. We do that because we, because you know, the schools which we are running mm. actually my guruji 
when it was opening in 2008. So by Guruji, his professor Samdarjan Bichi. So and he we invited him to give teachings there, mm. and uh, how to say he inaugurate kind of not inaugurate at that time it was not built. Mm. So foundation ceremony. So at that time he gave us an advice. He told us there are thousands of schools in India, thousands of. So for example, example if there is one thousand, so the school should not be like one thousand one. Mm. It should be one. Mm. So we couldn't understand why, what, what the meaning. It's two thousand eight. This means quite long before. That time he told us. We want some some different. So what is different? So give them like a moral teaching, meditation. It's like a meditation in Buddhism is called three shiksha, three trainings: shila that you know, yeah. ethics, samadhi, meditation, yeah. and pragya, wisdom. Mm. So must add these three trainings. So that's why our children they are doing good. So I'm not like saying, oh, they are the best, but we are putting such kind of effort, and uh, I, of course, I also help them and telling what to teach, what to give out, like dharma teaching. Mm. So every morning, so that's why maybe their habits is like that. So yes, I'm telling you, it's real. Yeah, I saw it with my own two eyes. Mm -hmm. It's real. Oh yes, so so hopefully because uh, we don't want to make them as others uh, as others. So something different. Like us, they can think well for others. Yeah. So because what our guru, his old master, Lama, our teacher, they always doing that and uh, always give teachings. And uh, he, as you know, his old master also visited Sangesa twice mm -hmm. and give teachings. So many of the students they got teaching of his old master. So of course, this kind of uh, blessings they have, such kind of so good vibrations they have. Okay, so Mechi. Uh, I want to put you another questions that you are from South Africa and you know this one to do. I do. Isn't that? So he and his holiness, they are very, very great friends. So can you share something about him? Yes. Yeah. So my mother was um, a great devotee of Desmond Tutu. Okay. Because during apartheid and during the struggle in South Africa for liberation, he was a, a, a leader in okay. front of okay. Nelson Mandela. Yes, mm. he did. I don't think he went to exile, but he was like always praying, always. And you know, I, I say the women are always into spirituality. Women love spirituality. Mm. For da, God, they love, they yeah. love. So Desmond Tutu, as an Anglican uh, preacher, Anglican priest, Okay. He was able to keep help the woman keep their spirit up. Oh. And the one philosophy that Desmond Tutu will that left a legacy in Desmond Tutu's forgiveness. Mm. He always used to say, You've got to forgive the white people. Okay. Yes, they have come to our country, they have colonized us, they have created so much havoc and so much ugliness. Mm. But if we don't forgive we become like that. Oh, that exactly, exactly. This is why this book was so profound. Yeah, when the I got here, book. my brother has a uh, here's my teacher's book. So mm. I, I got here and I was like looking. I was like, oh my goodness! <laughs> and I just sat here and I was reading the book because Desmond Tutu just talks about his legacy is forgiveness. Yeah. Forgiveness is not something that is easy. I'm sorry, it's not easy. Right, right, right. You see a person kill your mother, mm. a person kill your father, kill your uncles, burn your your brothers alive for no reason, just because of the color of your skin. Mm. Ah, and you want me to forgive? It's not easy. Yeah, you, you <laughs> want me to forgive and just like, okay, okay, I'm just going to forgive. <laughs> ah. So what Desmond Tutu has inspired me mm. to embody in my own life mm. is the courage to walk in the mm. I, I can't I'm telling you I don't want you to do forgiveness. 
I, I don't want to do it. I don't. I'm still sometimes very human. As much as I'm like, oh, no. Sometimes <laughs> I don't want to be a therapist. Sometimes I don't want to be a nun. Sometimes. Because I come from the Zulu uh, lineage and the Zulu tribe. And the Zulu tribe people are warriors. Okay. We take a spear and we're like, Phew! we oh. throw the spear and we take a shield and we can fight. Okay. Okay. Where is that going to get me? Mm. Always fighting with people, always fighting. No way. I will end up praying. Right. So Desmond Tutu has really inspired me as a young woman. And because my mother always loved listening to him and stuff, to walk the path of forgiveness, no mm. matter how difficult. Yes. I have a practice that I do every single day. Even when I'm walking, sometimes I just do it with my mala. I take off my mala when I'm walking, and I'm the part is I'm sorry, please forgive me. I just walk around. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. Because that it, I have two practices. May I be happy. May I be peaceful. Mm. May I be liberated from all ignorance. May I be liberated from all suffering. Mm. May all beings be happy. So it's meta. Right. After I finish meta, next sentence. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. Because I don't want to sink to a level of hatred right. for anyone. Mm. Because I can hate you, hate white people, hate black people, hate Asian people, hate all sorts of people, but the hate is eating you up. See, the Buddha has well said in Dhammapath. So by hate, hatred, hatred cannot cut the anger. If you hate people, then anger will arise. So how to do, if you want to destroy the hate, please love them. <laughs> so we are, you are, you are, you are none. And follower of Buddha, so like a very first strangers, he's saying like that. So we we cannot hate, no. Yes. So we need to. This is kind of this is also kind of ignorance. So we need to cut it. And we have student of Buddha, student of Desmond Tutu, student of His Holiness Dalai Lama. So they are always teaching about forgiveness, about the love. So we should make do the same. Very Isn't true. that? It's so true. When I go to South Africa and speak to some South Africans, even Americans, the rage, mm. the anger. I cannot say I don't have anger sometimes or rage, but I know how to get out. Mm. Most people don't know how to get out. And if there's one thing I can leave this world with, is forgiveness. Right. Yeah, that's good. I think this is the best. There's practice. It's not easy, but it's not impossible. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, Machi, you came to Dharamsala. Your purpose to visit Dharamsala to see His Holiness, Dalai Lama. And you make it. And so I want to know. So I, this was your first meeting, right? Ever in the life. So can you share some, your, how to say, experience or some moments how did you feel and how you even now you are feeling mm. i have been praying and chanting so in in i come from the christian background so even now that i'm chanting i still sometimes say i'm praying i still like kind of pray but i said to spirit to my higher self buddha i want to know like this maybe was like 17 years ago, 18 years ago, when I really got serious with Buddhism. Okay. I said, listen, I am not going to walk this Buddhist path for nothing. I want to know that there is something at the end of, of this path. I want mm. to have something to say, oh, I walked the Buddhist path and this is what I got. Mm. Okay. To prove that this works. Okay. So I was sitting in meditation, meditation, and one day a thought came to my mind. And the thought was, if you purify your mind and purify your own spirit, something beautiful will happen. Right, right. I said, oh, what beautiful can happen? <laughs> then I, I think a month later I went to the library okay. in America and I picked up a book on loving, oh, one of Dalai Lama's book, I think it was on loving kindness or something okay. like that. 
And I said, oh, wonderful. La, Dalai Lama, what great. Oh, interesting. Mm. Put the book back. Okay. 17 years later, I'm meeting the Dalai, their holiness, the Dalai Lama. And I'm remembering this. And I said, ah, oh, this thing works. Because if I hadn't cleaned out mm. my own anger, my own unforgiveness, mm. my own mental confusion, yes. I would not know that true Buddhism works. Because if I hadn't picked up that book mm. on the Dalai Lama in the library, I probably wouldn't have even known that there was a man called the Dalai Lama. So did you study, read that book? I read that book and then I put it down and I was like, oh, wonderful. 17 years later, I oh. am meeting the Dalai Lama and I'm like, oh my God, this is a dream come true. Okay. Oh my God, oh my God. I'm going to continue with Buddhism and, and uh, clearing my mind and forgiveness and loving kindness and compassion. Mm. It's not that, I, for me, it's kind of like I won the lottery. Not in a, not in like a money way or greed right. way, but it's a love lottery. Mm. It's like um, continue, mm. continue forward, because the more you clear your own house, mm. the more you you rise up to the level where teachers like the Dalai Lama are prepared to support you and to help you move forward and more books. And when I got here, I read the other book. I'm like, oh, I'm on the right path. I must continue. I must continue. Yeah. So he's like, to me, a teacher from ancient times. And to actually meet him, it's like, I was this little girl in America and I was just reading his book and now he's holding my hand and oh my God, I just started crying. Okay, I'm a nun who cries a lot. And I'm <laughs> like, oh my God, what is happening? What is happening? I was like, I was confused mm -hmm. because... To me, he's like my rock star. You know, like if you went to a concert, yeah, you're like, <laughs> oh, my rock star. To me, he was like my rock star because I read his books and I would watch his YouTube videos in America and I was like, wow, mm. he's such a holy person. So I never thought I would meet him. Honestly, I never thought I would meet him. So this is why I'm telling you that it's like kind of like winning the, the spiritual lottery <laughs> because I'm like, oh. My meditations help because yeah. if I didn't have that one idea during mm. meditation and then didn't follow and go and get a book and read the book mm. and say, okay, I'm going to practice. I don't know what this man is talking about. But loving kindness, loving kindness. I'm going to practice, but oh, I don't like to watch a forgive of loving kindness, but I'm going to practice. And to meet my spiritual rock star, mm. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I could, okay, okay, I practice some more. <laughs> because now I'm living proof for somebody else, maybe you might not meet the Dalai Lama and that's okay. But what what my story can inspire you to believe in is that if you practice your forgiveness work, your mm. metta bhavana, your, your, just your compassion towards humanity, it might not be Dalai Lama that you meet, but you might meet the right person for you that can right. help you in business. Right. That can, you might meet the love of your life that you want to marry. Mm. You might your path, your purpose will come together. Right. I wasn't praying to meet the Dalai Lama like, oh, I must meet him before he dies or I am. Uh, no, I was just like, I'm just going to practice what I read in his book. Right, yeah. his advice, yeah, his teachings. I'm just going to be a good student. Yes, that's great, that's great. So it means you are following him for the last 17 years. And I, yeah, I was like, okay, his mm. stuff works, but mm. I'm like, oh, yes. Dharma works. Yes, Dharma works. Only Dharma will save you. Dhamma works. Yes, yes. That's Honestly, Dhamma works. Mm. But here's, I want to give you some advice. Do not practice this with a, I'm going to get something, I'm going to get something. It's not going to work. Just practice for your own happiness. Mm. This right. is what I realize now because I was sitting in my room writing, writing, and I said, the reason Dhamma works is because I wasn't negotiating. Buddha, give me this. Buddha, give me that. Because Buddha is not going to give you nothing. <laughs> nothing, nothing. It's your own spirit. Right, right. And because I think maybe my spirit has come up a little bit more and I'm not angry as much and wanting to harm people. Mm. Oh, and now I get opportunities to meet such a holy man. Mm. 17 years ago, I couldn't because my consciousness was low. It was low, right. The right time was not right. Right. 
yeah the see the biggest mix message you might know his own mess whatever whenever he, he says if you want to be happy you should practice the compassion mm -hmm. and if if you want to make other happy also practice compassion so see the simple message of his own mess and and you try to practice that i think this is the biggest practice and everything will come within this isn't that mechi in buddhist teachings there are many many teachings different kind of teaching some very tough some very 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 easy and the basic or foundation of the buddha's teaching or entering into the buddhism is uh, how to say we have to follow the five precepts so how do you see the five precepts and how people can practice that in how to say in perspective of your country how you how you trying to make them how you, how you how you teach them the five precepts because the five precepts something new for you uh, because they are especially taught by the buddha so can you say something about it yeah um when i when i started following the buddha's teachings um i started exploring five precepts in my own life Christianity we have the 10 commandments okay that shall not thou shall not thou shall not but still i was lying you know like to tell, tell a little white lie here i think nobody's going to find out actually watch <laughs> because even in buddhism if i precept say don't tell lies and don't, don't drink and all of these things but i don't think my mind was open enough because i wasn't meditating in the christian way it was like hallelujah hallelujah go to church not that there's anything bad with that i grew up like that and it really helped me have a spiritual practice and have discipline when i came into buddhism and the five precepts and i would tell a white lie ha tembi have you eaten yes 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 oh did you finish your homework because when i found buddhism i was still in school mm. oh uh, did you finish your your thesis are you going to hand in your thesis Yeah, 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 and then I tell a lie. <laughs> oh, you know, my electricity went down and my yes. computer didn't work. Oh, I would feel so bad mm. because I was meditating. Mm. You don't actually understand how these laws, but Ten Commandments, uh, five precepts, work until you start to right. meditate. Right, right. Because I would tell a lie and I would feel. Mm. so guilty <laughs> yeah, yeah so much anxiety right, and right. then i start thinking 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 oh my god how am i going to tell another lie to get out of this lie and oh my goodness it's so bad it's so bad. it's like and then it sends you down a very dark path and then you just feel like a awful human being and you have a lot of shame mm. drinking oh i'm drinking i'm drinking and then you feel so awful the next day you can meditate at night just two glasses of wine tends to a whole bottle of wine drinking dancing 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 i don't say there's anything wrong with dancing and having one glass of wine if that's what you want to do but i could start to feel my body change my chemistry right, my body change right, my right. mind my speech the decisions i would make i say oh my goodness why would i want to do this to myself <laughs> right right and after meditation like being being consistent with my meditation and understanding the precepts on a physical level on a sensational level right i wanted to follow the precepts mm. and even in my practice like my therapy practice and coaching practice with with clients and patients i would tell them about teach them about the precepts i say mm. you want to be happy mm. sexual morality don't go around sleeping with everybody because you are lying to this one to this one right. to this one you yeah. are confused right you don't know what you told this one this one this one that's why you're coming to me now with all of the tears and the crying and where did it start from drinking oh you were in a night club you had a little drink and little drink and then oh you see a pretty little girl <laughs> and then pretty little girl tonight tell me for like how do you understand this thing? and this is how i started introducing um the five precepts and buddhist teaching i wouldn't even call them buddhist teaching that's why i say i don't label myself mm. but i can lead people into buddhism without them say one without them saying no no no, no i want buddhism 
but just talking to them about the normal things that we yes, do yes. as human beings. These are practical things, no? Practical and daily life basis. Daily life. Yeah, daily life. So improve your habit and improving your how to say. Yes, we can say the habit in while we are mm. living in society. Mm. Yeah. So I think every religion has such kind of precept. Mm. Maybe five or ten. It doesn't matter about number. So that's why. It's the first one in Buddha. It's called seal or ethical mm -hmm. ethics. Yeah. So maybe practicing in any religion, any philosophy, first we need to be very ethical. So that's why this is the beginning, as I told you. So that's a good. That's where you are teaching. It's really, really helping to others. But you know what? What my brother is the is the magic to this, mm -hmm. the meditation. Yeah. Because when you're not meditating, I'm sorry, I don't care. You can tell me about the five precepts. But I don't understand how they affect me mm. and the decisions I am making. Right, right. Until you start to meditate and you're like, oh, when I lie, I feel like this in my body. Mm. And then I have to tell another lie and another lie. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Right, right. You, you, you can tell people about precepts and Ten Commandments and all sorts of things until you bring in the face. Right. But they're never going to change because they don't actually feel it. That's why in the training, so or the, there are three kind of wisdom. So first the wisdom you acquire by listening or reading reading the books. And after that you contemplate it. Think about it. So wisdom kind of analytical thinking, thinking, what is gone, what he said. And the third one is meditation. So third one is very important. The rest two, they are not on. Maybe someone else, someone spoke about it, someone wrote about it, and we just uh, read it or just we listen it so this is some someone else knowledge mm. so when you do practice and when you put inside you then it becomes yours so that's why it's uh, very important that to do the meditation so meditation of course means becoming habitual habit okay so this is the thing and uh, at last i'm not going to make a long video otherwise people will get bored <laughs> but i am sure will not because uh, you are very very funny <laughs> and and you are putting the your answers very honestly and this is unique that uh, you are really doing some good things for many people i as i knew about you you are psychologist you are teaching this to and doing many many good things this is good so uh how many days have you been in india like a uh, 10 15 days no since the so now is the what the 18th 18th yeah 19 days 19 days mm -hmm. so you have been 19 or 20 days tomorrow will be 20 days mm -hmm. so what did you learn in 20 days mm -hmm. which you never learn somewhere else mm -hmm. this will be our last question so please give uh, please tell about this the special Thing, which which going to influence others, yeah. going to help others. Okay, I gotta tell you this. I gotta tell you this. <laughs> <laughs> I learned how much love Indian people and the Indian culture have. I thought I understood love. Okay, like I thought I understood love, but the amount of love that I have received from my brother, his family. All the monks that I've been around, actually, it's just like, it's too much. I was telling my sister yesterday, I was like, God, it's too much. Mm. It's, she's like, oh, stay for dinner. And some people tell the baby, the baby's sleeping. I was like, God, it's too much. I need to go back to my hotel room and just go play on my video mm. and on my computer and editing. And I was like, wow, I haven't actually experienced this much love. And mm. I didn't even know that I was missing this much love mm. and this much family. I, uh, I've been crying so much. I, I can't even tell you how many times I've been crying because I'm like, wow. Indian family love for real. Yes, so we Especially can, here in India. We consider, we have, India have one concept. Atith Devo Bhav. So Atith means guest. Dev, Dev means like a god or goddess. So the guests are like a de god and goddess. So we treat them there in that way. So so whoever comes, we always try to help them better, mm -hmm. as you seen in Sankisa. Or 
elsewhere mm. in India as you told. So I am happy that you, while you stayed in India, and people helped you, Indian people helped you, they, how to say, you didn't feel any kind of problem. So <laughs> I've never experienced so much love. Mm. Everybody should come to India to experience this kind of love. It will change you from inside out. Yes, it's because the India has been the country of the spiritual masters, mm. land of Buddha. Mm. So the whole India has such kind of energy. I think so. Mm. I think so. Mm. Because uh, many all the see, the Buddhism mm. arises from here. Buddha gave the teaching of loving kindness all over the world mm. to everyone. And uh, many other religions, of course, the Jainism and uh, Hinduism and uh, sub parts of this religion, many, many leaders and uh, sadhus, uh, monks, arhat, Buddha, they have been in this land. So maybe this automatically make a very peaceful and the habit of people also become like very, maybe gentle. So I can't say <laughs> that uh, all people are like that, but most of them, they really love to the guests who come to their home or their country. I have to say, I got good karma because to meet beautiful family like this, to have a family like this, I got good karma. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. And uh, thank you very much, thank for, you so much. Yeah, for joining my channel. And thank you for watching this this video. And uh, hopefully you, you learn many things from this video and also about the different culture and different how to say thinking or different view of other country person like Machi from South Africa and she also talk about Desmond Tutu and of course about his illness and many more things and thank you for coming here and having this interview this is an interview as I told you earlier I am not good interviewer but That's just, not true. He's an amazing interviewer. He's but, not true. My brother is amazing. But I'm just trying to trying to discuss, you know, just sharing the ideas. And um, thank you very much for joining us. Thank and uh, in future, you. somewhere we will meet. Mm -hmm. And even these days, it's very easy to communicate uh, through the social media. And I really uh, giving you many, many best wishes to practice your dharma. And, uh, Hoping that you can really change, you can make really, really change where people require. As you told in your country, even the, the many bad things happen. So you can give the, them the teachings of Buddha or the teachings of Hidulness or the teaching of loving and kindness. Thank you very much and take care. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. He's an amazing interviewer. <laughs> I love him. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.